Welcome to Tech World, your quick roundup of some of the top technology news stories from across the globe. This month we have Uber's new CEO, Amazon's Whole Foods purchase, cryptocurrency news and more. For this episode's Hot Topic interview, we spoke with Martin Whistler from EY about generational differences in attitude to technology. First though, here's your roundup of the month's biggest tech news. The Federal Trade Commission gave the green light to Amazon's purchase of Whole Foods Market in a deal valued at $13.7 billion. The deal signals a turning point for Amazon, which has been struggling to break into the US grocery business for years. Sticking with the topic of food, Chinese search giant Baidu sold its food delivery subsidiary to Ellie.me, a startup backed by Alibaba. The reported price tag of the sale was around $800 million, a steep discount from the business's prior valuation of around $2.5 billion. Office sharing company WeWork raised $4.4 billion from SoftBank Group and SoftBank Vision Fund. SoftBank is investing $3 billion in WeWork itself and putting $1.4 billion into three new WeWork subsidiaries, WeWork China, WeWork Japan and WeWork Pacific. The cryptocurrency space has been really heating up of late. For a start, the price of Bitcoin reached new heights in August, closing out the month at over $4,770. Also, startup Protocol Labs launched an initial coin offering for its Filecoin network, raising close to $200 million from accredited investors. Dara Kosh Rashahi was announced as the new CEO of Uber. He's the former CEO of online travel company Expedia, and takes over at Uber from Travis Kalanick. Dara said he hopes to take the ride-hailing firm public in the next 18 to 36 months. That's it for our top global tech news roundup, but keep watching to see this episode's Hot Topics interview. We spoke with Martin Whistler from EY about generational differences in attitude to technology, media and telecommunications. Martin, thank you for joining us today. So EY recently conducted some research into the attitudes of different age groups towards technology companies. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, and that's right. So we know that increasingly the way that companies serve their customers and their customer experience is important to, to media companies, to technology companies, and also to telecoms companies. So we really wanted to get under the skin of that. We conducted a survey of two and a half thousand UK consumers, asking them essentially how they use products and services with those different providers. So looking at things like mobile phones, for example, but also through to television subscription services and music services. Okay, and what would you say were the key findings to come out of that research? Well, crucially, we broke it down and looked at it across the continuum of their journey. So right from understanding what products they wanted to buy to, to things like how they interacted with those service providers and then across to loyalty. And some of the interesting things that came out, for example, would be um, levels of satisfaction. So we realised that baby boomers, for example, are highly dissatisfied with um, long wait times on their, on their um, call centres and also very dissatisfied if they talk to people in call centres overseas. And yet, they're not the least loyal. Um, there are people within generations who will switch service providers much more frequently. We know that younger generations, for example, like Generation um, Z, they like to change once they see new upgrades to their services, new cameras, new equipment, you know, better screens. And yet, older generations will tend to hold on to their devices until they run out of a useful lifetime. It's kind of that attitude that if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, if it's working well enough for them, then why would they bother upgrading? I think it's very much that. And I think it's also, there's an element of you know, being the cool younger generation, having the latest piece of kit, showing off. That doesn't seem to resonate so much with older generations. And I think also that they tend to be stickier as well. Once they've got their service, if it's working for them and they understand how it works, then they tend to stick with that. They tend to like what they have. Okay. And um, was there anything particularly surprising that came out of the research? Yeah, I think the single most surprising thing was how strong the high street remains amongst UK consumers. So we saw, for example, with Generation Z, that 25% of them like, still like to go in store. You know, a quarter of Generation Z will go in store to touch the devices, to check out the, uh, the mobile phone before they make the purchase. That surprised us a little bit. And it's across all generations a similar story. So overall, about 43% of people like to go in store, whether it's to get advice or information or whether it's just to handle the device. 
Okay, so there's loads of information online, but people still want that kind of one-on-one -on -one interaction with a real person. It's a real split. I think what you see is there's, there's people going into store, sometimes they have an interaction with a real person, and sometimes it's just about actually seeing the technology in their hand, being able to play with it. And then for about um, the other half of the demographic, they're happy to do things online, whether it's buying the device, doing their research, or just interacting with customer services. So, bearing in mind the findings of the reports, what can companies that operate within the TMT space do to make sure that they appeal to all of these different age groups? Well, I think the important word here is nuance. Different generations want a different experience, and there are so many channels out there now that the touch points for each generation are very different. We've already talked a little bit about how the in-store remains really important for different reasons for different generations. And we see the same thing, for example, with social media. We know that social media is a place where a lot of customers will go to talk about their experiences with their service providers. And it's also a place that a lot of people will go to learn about their, their service offerings and different products. It's where people go to get information increasingly. So having those different nuances and the different touch points is, is a really important thing for a lot of service providers. Brilliant. Thanks, Martin. Thank you. That's all for this episode. For more of the latest top tech headlines, head to uktech.news.